Hi Monica, it's Daphne here. Thank you very much for working so hard on this course, you're doing amazingly and uh, for sending in your next uh, essays for correction. You've done a really, really good job here on both these tasks. You've done really well. I'm especially impressed with your essay. Uh, you've made some really interesting points and uh, you are showing great improvement. Well done. I hope you're enjoying the course. So this one, let's kick off. This is a pie chart. Yep, so you've said this pie chart shows the percentage of students um, that preferred one school subject to another, comparing seven different topics in Germany in actually is 2018. Don't worry too much, but make sure you get that right in the exam. Um, you started off with we can see. Now, I think this should be more impersonal. Remember, it's academic, so avoid like we and they and kind of too informal stuff. So I'm suggesting your first line could be history and PE were the most popular choices representing X and Y of the total respectively. So here we've got in your superlative immediately the most popular and uh, you've also used respectively and you've given me some data there. So that's quite a nice line to start with. Uh, I would avoid predilection. This is an unusual word. I know you've made a huge effort to uh, use a different word instead of choice. Um, this is a little has a connotation in English. It has another meaning as well, which is not so good. Um, so I would try and avoid that. Um, okay, so that's that line. Um, fewer people, okay, um, fewer people voted for mathematics, which um, was ranked in third place. We could say that which was ranked in third place with 19.5%, closely followed by physics um, in fourth place with 18.1%. Okay, so that's a really nice overview of the whole thing. This, I think, is really interesting. I think you've really grouped this very, very well. So, whereas the you could have total proportion or overall proportion of people who liked PE, history, uh, physics, and maths were very similar. Oh, sorry. Okay. Where's the portion? Okay, not proportion then. That's different. Portion you'd have to have. Um, were very similar. There was significant difference between biology and geography. Okay, biology, yeah, and geography, okay. Um, whose numbers belonging to them were approximately a third of the figures of the first four places? Yes, really difference, really good difference. Um, now, significant difference between these first four and, yeah, so... What you've written here is there's a difference between biology and geography, which actually there isn't. What you mean is there is a difference between those and these. So I would suggest this, between these first four and, so we'll take out that, biology and geography, whose numbers were approximately a third of the figures of the first four. Yeah, between these, maybe go across these. We're not repeating that first four. Um, biology with 7.1 7 and geography, yeah, lovely. In the very last place was IT, that only, yes, that only 3.7% of students voted for, or something like that, or students uh, preferred. Fondness, I wouldn't use that. Again, that's for a, a friend or an animal or something like that. It's definitely not for school. <laughs> uh, but you can have choice, it's okay. I mean, I know it's difficult to avoid it the whole time, and I, I think it's less significant in part one than in part two. Uh, but you've done a very, very good job there. Uh, on how you lay it out, um, I think you should lay it out like this. Uh -huh. So I've just tried to divide it up a bit. So I think you should divide it up so like that. Okay, then this is going to be your second bit. So you're going to have one, two, three, basically four sections like that. Not all in one paragraph. It's easier for the coherence. But nicely done. Uh, so this is jobs during their studies. You've done this very interestingly. So great first paragraph. Uh, intro, I mean. Experts throughout the developing and developed world are debated whether students working part time during their studies has a poly. Uh, this is my friend. Students working part time has a whole. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, you might have to change this around. This word has. 
um, because students can't ha it's the students who work part-time whether that has an influence whether working part-time during studies you you need to change that use that as an adjective whether working part-time take out students there we go whether working part-time during university studies let's say studies has a positive impact on students careers future careers or merely diminishes ES their performance during this time okay sorry that just doesn't quite work that bit with that long subject okay that should work this essay will discuss both sides using examples from recent studies of top Mexican unis to demonstrate points and prove arguments a very nice introduction good on the one hand there's ample evidence that supports the idea of studying in the idea that Studying and working helps young adults to develop not only academic skills, but also other capabilities that are required in today's world. Fantastic. Great line. The central reason behind this is twofold. Firstly, students cannot acquire uh, so soft skills such as negotiation, teamwork and flexibility in the classroom. That's got to come at the end um, in the classroom. So link it together. Therefore, they need to face real job um, Yes, out of incidents. I want to use experience, um, therefore, they need to. Um, hang on, therefore, they need to face real job um, incidents to abstain them. Okay, real job uh, experience I want to use, but I know you've got experience in the weather there. Okay, I'm going to put in experience here. Secondly, companies prefer to uh, we would probably hire or employ rather than contract um, contract people with some real experience in the field to high level jobs. Uh, watch out with these little expressions, they're going to need to come at the end to higher level jobs rather than recent, rather than, yes, rather than recent inexperienced. Um, you need to make the difference between the experienced and the inexperienced graduates straight from uni. For example, a research by ITESM showed that over 60% of students could not find a job in the first six months after graduation. Consistent with this line of thinking, they changed the educational model to one based more on developing projects with enterprises rather than purely academic learning. Very interesting point. Uh, you've argued that really well. I like that a lot. On the other hand, although there's a case for modifications that should be implemented in the traditional education model to adapt the study plans to the new reality of the world. Whoa, this is long, okay? Although there's a case for modifications that should be implemented in traditional models, okay? Pause. That needs a comma there. Yeah, now you need to carry on. I'm just going to do this because I, this I have a little problem. I couldn't quite work it out. Um, I think you can probably lose all that bit. Possibly. Tell me if I've got that wrong. Uh, the impact of technical and theoretical learning cannot be overstated. Okay? I don't think you need to do that. Oh, sorry, I don't think you need that bit in that. It's just making it extra long, a bit confusing. This is largely because concepts can be taught so fast that it is difficult to assure that learners will uh, assure learners' comprehension. Yeah? We've got one word there instead of all of those words. For example, if younger generations are most focused on obtaining experience rather than learning theoretical abilities, then our world you could have could have an overpopulation, go a surplus of uh, qualified or underqualified workers. Yeah. Consequently, it's possible to state beyond doubt. Usually, that would be singular, not plural. That the largest disadvantage to study and work at the same time is a potential lack of specific knowledge to perform a job, which can result in considering weakening of education's effectiveness, or either educational or education's effectiveness. Okay, again, very nicely argued paragraph, really, really interesting. Uh, this is you, you, you're absolutely on track here. This is very good. 
So the arguments itself was given, I believe that young adults need to complement their studies, good word, with activities that help them to or help develop capabilities that will aid them to succeed. To succeed. Uh, nevertheless, tertiary education has to evolve in a um, in a way that does not not sacrifice hard skills over soft ones. Okay, in the present world, the uh, the accelerated increase in technological advances would provoke automation of jobs. Therefore, the pros of part time okay therefore the experience the evident value of part time jobs for students are are if we put evident we don't need to put are with that are um right, part time jobs for students are undeniable. Okay? Good. I don't like pros and cons. I'd avoid that. I think it's a little bit too informal. Um, Monica, I'm really impressed. You've done a great job here. You've argued this very academically. Your writing is really high level. You are um, kind of interesting in your arguments. You're challenging the examiner to think about what you're writing, which is really good. Um, you are just picking up a few little mistakes, but really not too many. And hopefully the words I've added will just help it be a little bit clearer on the coherence. Really, really good job. Thank you.